We want to welcome all of His Glory Nation from east to west to north to south as we bring you our latest study in 2 Samuel 16. Today, David is going to be on the run from his son uh, Absalom, still in the wilderness, and God is going to put a misdirection into uh, people who are giving uh, young Absalom direction on what he should do. And David is really trusting in the Lord. He's literally having a, a, a man in the line of Benjamin cursing him and throwing stones. And David shows great humility, allowing the man to live and allowing the man to throw stones and trusting in the Most High God. And uh, was, David's life was, was literally a wilderness period. And he had to trust in the Lord with all his heart, his soul, and his mind. So we had a lot of great gleaning in this Word of God and trust that the Lord Most High has it in our life when people are throwing rocks at us and it looks like we're on the run, which is our entire life. We trust in the Most High God. He will deliver us from all. As we always do, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down from east to west to north to south to be the true teacher in the living Word of God, which is our Savior, Christ the Lord. Okay, so let's get into 2 Samuel 16. Again, David is uh, the son of, of uh, in the line of Judah the king, and David has an everlasting covenant with the Lord called the Davidic covenant, that the Messiah would come from the line of David. So this was extremely important who the next king would be. So when, you, when in doubt, you know God has it. God has it here. Second Samuel 16, when, da when David lo was a little past the top of the mountain, there was Ziba, the servant of Mesubethus, who met with a couple of saddled donkeys. And on, there, on them 200 loaves of bread, 100 cl clusters of raisins, 100 summer fruits, and the skin of wine. So this Zerba, Ziba is going to give, them, uh, give, give David and his people some uh, nutrition. Uh, two is the number of a witness, or two of the number of a covenant. The loaves of a bread refer to the bread of life, which is Jesus Christ. The cluster of raisins, the summer fruit, which is the first fruit which is our Messiah, Jesus Christ, and a skin of wine for refreshing. And Jesus uh, is, uh, will, will come back and, and drink the wine, uh, as he said in the Gospels. Praise his name. Uh, verse 2, And the king said to Zeba, What do you mean to do these? So Zeba said, The donkeys are for the king's household to ride on. The donkeys were a sign of the kingship. So when you rode on a donkey, you were a king. So when we celebrated Palm Sunday last Sunday, this is the week of what we call Passover and Resurrection Day. We're going to do a study this week on Passover, what it means, and how we should take Easter out of our vocabulary because Easter is a pagan holiday. We, 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 we uh, worship and we uh, memorialize Passover because it was on Passover that the third day that Christ rose again. We should be calling it Resurrection Day and Passover as it is in the Torah. So we'll have a study this week. So the donkeys, and then Jesus rode in on a donkey, fulfilling Zechariah 9.9 on Palm Sunday. And then in our study, it was also my conjecture based on Jonathan Kahn, that I believe that was probably, Je uh, that, that was probably Jesus' birthday as well. Amazing. So the donkey, the king's household, to ride on bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat and the wine for those who are faint in the wilderness to drink. Re, uh, re, re giving them strength. Again, Jesus Christ is the bread of life. He gives us strength through his word. He gives us strength because he is the living water. We rely on him. All these symbols not only mean to David, but also means to the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who will reign in Jerusalem as the King of Kings and the Lord of hosts to fulfill the Davidic covenant. And we know through the prophets, Ezekiel, Isaiah, uh, Amos and uh, Jeremiah, that David will be the king of Israel again. And uh, we look forward to that day of the Davidic covenant when we reign with our beloved Jesus Christ and our Messiah, the king. Then the king said, wherever your master's son Ziba said to the king, indeed he is staying in Jerusalem, God's holy city that our king of kings and Lord of hosts will reign from. Today the house of Israel will restore the kingdom of my father to me. So the king of Ziba, hear all the belongings of Methshubabeth, is yours. I mispronounced that, but you can get the pronunciation in the in the Blue Letter Bible. Just click on the uh, pronunciation. They'll give you the Hebrew uh, pronunciation. Some of these words are very, very hard to pronunciate, uh, but the, the point is we know what the Lord is speaking. We're looking at David as a uh, as, as Holy Scripture. 
as 2 Timothy 3.16. Everything is God-breathed for our doctrine. So we can look at this to give us hope in our life when we're on the run. Even the king of Israel is on the run. We look to nourishment for the bread of life and the living water. And we humble ourselves and we seek his face like David is doing. And I humbly bow down before you that I found favor in your sight, my, uh, my Lord, O King. Again, this was meaning Adon, not Lord as in Jehovah. He's calling him Adon the king. Now, when David came to Baram, there was a man from the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera, coming from here. He came out cursing and continuously he came out. So this man uh, was uh, still from the Benjamites, was upset what happened to, to the, uh, Saul and his sons, and he was taking that out on King David. And instead of David fighting back and having the guy, he, David could have had the guy killed. David took the punishment. David just turned the other cheek. As Jesus says, if they strike you on the one cheek, give them the other cheek to strike back. David is showing great humility because David knew that Saul was anointed and he had great love for Jonathan. And there he understood the anger that came from this man. And he did not act in a in a, in a uh, uh in a way that would be spiteful towards this man. He let him live. And then he threw stones at David and all the servants of King David and all the people and all the mighty men were on the right hand and on the left. They're throwing stones at King David. We're going to have thrown stones thrown at us because of our faith in Jesus Christ. And that's why we put up the shield of to protect us from the rocks. And that's why we put on the full armor of God. The five defensive weapons which represents grace. The two offensive weapons, which is the sword, which is the word of God, and the artillery fire of prayer. So important that we have our, our, our elements up. Verse 7, And Shemai said with a curse, Come out, come out, you bloodthirsty man, you rogue. The Lord has brought upon you the blood of the house of Saul. So he's accusing him because of the blood of the house of Saul. In whose place you have reigned. And Jehovah has delivered the kingdom in the hand of Absalom, your son. So now you are caught in your own evil because you're a bloodthirsty man. Well, part of that is true. Remember that God himself said, because there's blood on your hands, David, you should not build my temple. It will be your son Solomon. So this, this man is continuing to go and go after David. And David has turned the other cheek because David could have had him taken out just like that. And David is giving this guy another, uh, another day. And when we get accused, we need to turn the other cheek as well. We see that in politics today, that one will scream at another one and they fight back with vile and vengeance and try to get back at your enemy. Now we need to turn the other cheek in love to show them that, you know what, I'm, I'm going to put it on. Part of what he's saying is true. I caused this own problem by, 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 by being uh, unfaithful to the Lord Most High and doing this with Bathsheba in the dark and having Uriah killed to cover it up. This is what put me in this case. As Nathan told me this from God, this is exactly what was going to happen to me. I made my bed. I'm going to have to sleep in it. And when we go into sin nature, there's repercussions to sin. And we're going to have to take those, take those sin nature and ask for forgiveness, but, 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 but handle the consequences that God's going to give us and trust in him and get through it and use it as a learning lesson so he can teach us and mold us and shape us for his purpose and his glory. Praise his name. But the king said, what have I done to you, the sons of Zerah? So let him curse be, be, because the Jehovah has said, curse David, who then you shall say, why have you done so? And David said to, to Abisha and his servant, so how, how my son have you come from my own body seeks my life? How much more may this Benjamite let him alone and let him curse for so Jehovah has ordered him. He's saying, let him alone, Get, let him go. If this is of God, let it be of God. I definitely have done things that are wrong. We have all done things that are wrong in the flesh. And that's why we need a savior that came out of the line of David, the son of David, Jesus Christ, to forgive our sins, past, present, and future. We trust in the Lord and we give it to the Lord and we don't fight back. We don't take vengeance. The vengeance is of the Lord, as the scripture says. And we trust in him and let him fight our battles and walk in his purpose and walk in his glory. David is showing great humility here, whereas a vile king could have gone back and cut him off just like that. But he's trusting in Jehovah God. It may be that Jehovah will take my affliction, that the Jehovah will repay me for good for cursing this day. So he's saying, it's in, it's in God's hands. I'm trusting God. I put myself in this situation because of my sin nature, and I'm, I'm being persecuted because of that. It is just. 
and I'm going to trust in the king, uh, the, the chairman of the board, the, the, the Supreme Court, which is God the Father. I'm going to trust in him. I'm going to put it in his hands and trust him in all things, and I'm not going to fight back because I put myself in this situation. Now the king, uh, Shemai, went along the hillside opposite and cursed him and threw stones and kicked up dust. Imagine this guy just throwing stones and vile against David and all David's men, and they're, he's getting away with it. It would be, it's unheard of. And, uh, but David is showing the mercy of the Lord. He's showing the mercy of love. He's showing that Jesus tells us to turn the other cheek. Now the king of all the people who were with him became weary, so they refreshed themselves. Meanwhile, Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem, and Athapel was with him. Remember, Athapel meant in the Hebrew, my, 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 my brother is foolish. He's going to give Absalom in the next chapter the proper advice on how to conquer David. But God is going to give them confusion by getting two pieces of advice and throwing him off. Again, God had everything planned per per perfectly. David was going to be tested, and David was going to be punished for his sin nature. And it was just. But God had a plan for David, and David would fulfill that plan, and God would give him a path that the, the Messiah, the Christ, would come through the loin, and that God would give David an everlasting covenant, and that's the Davidic covenant, that there will be a king in the line of David forever. And that king is our king, and, king of kings and Lord of hosts, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, praise his name. So it was when Hushai the Arctite, David's friend, came to Absalom, that Hushai said to Absalom, long live the king, long live the king. Remember, this man was coming on behalf of David. So now Absalom is going to get two, two pieces of advice. And at first, he's going to take uh, Athael's instead of the, the, the second. But in the end, in chapter 17, we're going to see where God changes the mind of Absalom and takes the, the, takes the wrong advice. And then he's going to go kill himself. And Huzai said, said to Absalom, No, but when Jehovah and his people and all the men of Israel choose... His I will be, and I will remain with him. So Absalom say, why are you coming to me? You are with my father David. So is this a trick? Are you up to something? Then Absalom, Absalom said to Athiopel, great advice as what we should do. Then, then he said to Absalom, go into your father's concubines, whom he has left, and keep the house. And all of Israel will hear that you are bored by your father. Then the hands of all who are with you will be strong. This is exactly what God told Nathan would be the punishment to David for his, his, uh, his, his adultery with Bathsheba and then covering it up with the death of Uriah. He said that what you did, David, was in the dark, but what your punishment will be in the light. I will have your own household come to your wives and your concubines for all of Israel to see. Talk about great humility. The king, David, what he did in the dark that nobody saw, what is going to happen to him is the greatest humility. The king's wives and concubines are going to be uh, sexually taken in by his son and his reign to try to kill and destroy his own father to get, become the king of Israel. What God is meant for the dark, will light will always shine upon that. And that's why we have to show great humility, giving up ourselves for him and for his purpose and his glory, because the world has a way of humbling us all. And the more we can get rid of self and trust in the Lord and humble ourselves, the better our path will go. So then he pitched a tent for Absalom at the top of the house, and Absalom went into the father's concubines in sight of all Israel fulfilling exactly what God told Nathan would happen to David for his punishment. Now the advice of Athiopel, which he gave in those days, was one if one had inquired at the oracle of Elohim. So God's hand was behind what he was going to do. And his purpose and his glory was going to be fulfilled. God is involved. So all the advice of Athiopel, both with David and Absalom. So God gave it to as, a, as his purpose and his glory. And it looks as Athiopel was showing the right reason, the right wisdom. We're going to see how God spins that around in chapter 17 to save David and to save the kingship because God's everlasting, everlasting promise to David that there will be a king, the Davidic covenant and the, and the Messiah, Jesus Christ, would come from the line of David and would be the king of kings and Lord of hosts. This is wrapping up 2 Samuel 16. David on the run, being thrown rocks, and how we show humility, trust in the Lord in all things as he's got it. But when we create sin in our outwardly ways, 
there's repercussions to sin and we ask for forgiveness, take our sins, humble ourselves and seek the face of the Lord and do his will in our life. If you're following us on his glory YouTube channel, uh, click on the avatar below as we're doing more on our YouTube channel in the future. And may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you till next time. God bless you.